getting the sand out of a car in the desert, especially after a helicopter shot, I actually thought we were going to suffocate. <laughs> I was trying to get on the radio and say, you better take the helicopter away, because, ha, 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 not for telling, not a joke, we actually can't breathe. Under every single 1920s disease. You end up with these massive, crusty gilberts up your nose. Guys, come on. <laughs> Because the ooze was so bad, we had to get even more drastic with the weight shedding. Jeremy, distract him. Ask him a question. On the other side of the car, and I'll pull the knob off. May? No. No, no, look. That's a serious amount of blood. I seriously don't have any plasters. Well, what am I going to do about this? Rub salt in it. There isn't any. Ah. So all the rest of his knobs. There's only one knob left in there now. <laughs> we were having fun, but then we discovered we were travelling with Bill Oddie. What have we stopped for now? It was a bee eater. It's a bird. It was a bee eater. And it's green. How many bee eaters have you ever seen? It was a green with a blue tail. It was absolutely beautiful. And you frightened it off with your stupid hat. I think that's a bit harsh. It was his hat. <laughs> so we stopped to look at another bird. Broken What's that one, then? What one? Bird in the top of that tree. James, you're encouraging. What tree? That, that tree. James is Well, I'm pointing. Trees, that yeah. one that I'm pointing at, that one. There isn't a bird in the top. There is. Top left, sticky up bit, there's a red one. Red one what? It's a leaf, you blithering idiot. It's a bird. There is no bird in that tree. There are leaves. There is no bird in that tree. No, I can see it as well, the red one. That, on the top, that, there is a red yes, bird, a little. You go and have a go over and have a look. About the size of a sparrow. There isn't a bird in the There's tree. A red I one can in that see tree. It. There's there isn't. a red bird in that tree. It's got a bit of yellow on it. That might be a leaf in front of it, actually. No, it's a it's predominantly red. And it's, it's predominantly in that tree. a leaf. Listen, lend me the binoculars. I'll find it. There it is, clear as day. He's gone to get his bird book. Jeremy, are you bird spotting? No. You've I'm got just... a pen. Why have you got a pen? You tick them off when you've seen them in your book. Hornbill, southern yellow billed. Place. Hornbill, yellow bill, bill, oddy. Tick. You've got a book and you're making ticks in it. Yeah. You mend motorcycles, I find that odd. Look, Hammond. It's a big pompous bear. Oh, yes, there, in the distance. Oh, it's quite close, actually. Look at it that way. Oh, that's better. That's a nice way of looking at Jeremy, actually. A long way away. Day two on the salt pans, and we'd been told that today our problem would not be mud, but dust. That meant James and I had to rethink our wardrobe solutions. A local guide showed us how to assemble some local dust-proof headwear, which was a bit trickier than slipping on a balaclava. It's like the generation game, this. Is that if a lion comes so you can hide? You'll notice that Hammond's making jokes here because he's not that bothered whether it works or not. Well, to be honest, lads. I'm paying yeah. attention, I'm wrapped. Do you think this is going to protect Shut you? up, Hammond. We're paying, it's James just and I a need sheet to know how to on do your head is not going to protect you. going to keep the dust out. Right. OK. Right. Thank you. Thanks for that. Why are you doing this? What? Well, you just... How much dust goes in your car? Well, yeah, just cos my car's better than your car's. I'm not missing there out on one. Nice, well, that looks good. I can't see you. Yeah. <laughs> you put it over your head like... <laughs> I've forgotten everything he did. Well, what did he... He did that, didn't no, he? He did a twisty, that. twisty thing. As you know, I'm not a practical man. No, you're really not. Hey, this is Jeremy, working. I'll, do you reckon Jeremy can cut himself with one of these? <laughs> <laughs> Almost certainly. The trouble I've got is my head's quite big. Really? <laughs> good grief, Jeremy. Really? Jeremy's got a big head, you say? There's no need to do that, James. That's just showing off. Well, that's what he did. Well, James, you look like the elephant man. It won't go round. Mine isn't big enough. James, you look like you got out of the shower. Girls can do this, can't they, with towels? Bloody Nora. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I... T ah! Oh, I've done it. This is quite, I've got, got, like, get... neck curtains hanging down here. I can't get a twisty thing on. Yeah. Me. Rock and roll! Now, if I get on this side, you get on that side. You need somebody on both sides. Why? Because then it seems to shut better. Ready? Ready? We don't just say ready. You have to go ready, no. steady. Ready, ready. steady. 
<laughs> ready, steady. Ready, steady. Ready, steady. Leave it, it's boring. Is that technically possible? Probably not. 47 years, I've never been speechless. <laughs> but in truth, Jeremy shouldn't have been that surprised because as we were learning on our travels, bushcraft car maintenance is quite an art in Botswana. And that in turn made us think about one of our esteemed BBC colleagues. You know Ray Mears, the chap who's always walking through terrain just like this, explaining how you can make, I don't know, a multi-storey car park out of that. Uh, it's all very interesting, but he's never put a motoring slant on it, really. So we thought we'd give it a bash. In a section of the programme we're going to call Mears My Ride. For example, this component down here on Hammond's car is a leaf spring. And if that breaks when you're driving through the bush, you're in big trouble. Or are you? What you need is a piece of Mapani wood and a penknife. You whittle away at this for some time until you arrive at a leaf spring, such as this one that I made earlier. For example, you could be travelling through the jungle in a low-slung car such as, say, the Lancia Beta, and you come to terrain where the bumps are too big. You're going to ground out. You're in big trouble. Or are you? What you need is a piece of Mapanic wood, which you whittle with your penknife until you've created these that I made earlier. Simply pop them on top of your suspension spring and you're saved. For example... <laughs> <laughs> For example... If when you're driving through the bush your prop shaft snaps, you're in real trouble. Or are you? Because what you need is a piece of Mapwani wood like this, which you whittle away with a penknife until you end up with something like this that I made earlier. I've even mounted it to a uh, universal joint. Now you simply pop this into the fire to harden it and you're going to be okay. The only problem is, chaps, Mapwani wood yeah. is an elephant's absolute favourite food. That is a disadvantage, potentially. So you could come back from like a walk, say, yeah. and he's eating your car. That, well, a lot of elephants looking guilty because they've nibbled your car. Yes. Have you eaten my car? <laughs> nope. Mm -mm. Well, what's that in your neck? Oh. The prop shaft. <laughs> Swallow it. Swallow it quickly. <laughs> no, I haven't eaten. Oh, no, I've set fire to the prop shaft. Yeah, I have actually set fire to your prop shaft as well, there. Nice one, Ray. Well done. <laughs>